Well, as you know, Thanksgiving, at least the American version, is right around the corner, and Thanksgiving means food. Specifically, of course, turkey, green bean casserole, all of those things are wonderful, but it also means mashed potatoes. And it turns out that since Terrifier 2 came out this year, mashed potatoes are relevant for the horror genre as well, so what better time to share a wonderful mashed potatoes recipe? I have a special guest who's going to be presenting most of this recipe, but before we get to him, let me just explain what you're going to need. Of course, you're going to need potatoes. For this recipe, I recommend Yukon Gold, but russets will do just as well. You're also going to need a head of garlic, some scallions or green onions, chives, a little bit of rosemary, just about a teaspoon of nutmeg, three bay leaves, a stick of butter, make sure you use unsalted so that you can control your own salt. You will need two cups of heavy cream. And then in terms of tools, you'll need some bowls, you'll need some pots and pans, which I have behind me. You'll need a high quality chef knife and honing steel. I would recommend also a paring knife. You'll certainly need a potato ricer. You could substitute a food mill if you don't have one of these, but you do not want to use power tools for mashed potatoes. You want a ricer or a food mill. And of course, you're gonna need a potato peeler. With all of that having been said, I think it's best to turn this over to a true mashed potatoes professional. So I'm gonna get out of here. He's a man of few words, so I will be narrating this in voiceover, but you won't be seeing me again on video, on screen, for the rest of this video. You'll see me in the next one. But until then, take care and stay scared, and I'm going to get out of here and make room for my special guest. Well, as you know, Art the Clown may prefer a hacksaw, but he still knows his way around a chef knife, and he begins, as any good chef would, with honing the knife. Once that's done, he can move on to the rest of the preparation, beginning with peeling the potatoes. He's using just a regular hand peeler. Now, if you're using a food mill instead of a potato ricer, you could skip this step because the food mill will peel the potatoes, but since we're using a ricer, Art uses the peeler. Also notice that it has that little corner, so if there's a bad spot, Art digs it out. Once those are done, he's ready to dice the potatoes so they're of a uniform size. And he has a sense of humor about it, of course. The idea here is if we dice the potatoes, they're of a uniform size, they will cook thoroughly and evenly so some of them won't end up underdone and others overdone. And it looks like he's finished with some of those potatoes. Once those are ready, they go into a pot, and he will fill that with cold water. It's important to start with cold water. You don't start with hot water. You'll start with the cold water, put that on the stove, and bring it to a boil, as Art is doing just now. But we don't want just water. We want to salt the water generously. Art does seem to enjoy his salt, as you would know if you've seen the movie. And now, while that's coming up to the boil, he begins by preparing the garlic. Seems like a few of them got away, but that's not going to stop Art. Now, Art crushes the garlic with the side of the knife. That makes it very easy to peel and then he'll use the very same knife to mince the garlic as finely as he wants to, which in this case is a fairly fine mince. That's going to take a minute, so I'm not going to show you the entire process, but he worked on it for a few minutes and ended up with a nice little bowl full of garlic.
Meanwhile, over at the stove, the potatoes have come to a boil, and we don't want them to stay at a boil, so we reduce the temperature and put a lid on and let those simmer on low. While those continue to cook, Art prepares the scallions, or green onions, by thinly slicing them. Those will go into the milk and the flavors will all infuse together. A lot of people use only either the white or the green of the onion. Art knows that you can use both parts and so he does so. And he prepares a nice quarter to half a cup of those. And now Art is going to prepare what's called a bouquet garni. That's a little bundle of herbs. It includes the three bay leaves and a little bundle of rosemary tied together with this string. Of course, Art doesn't need the entire string, so he cuts off a little piece of it. And then he'll just tie all of the herbs, the bay leaves and the rosemary, together into a nice little bundle. That means that those can go into the milk and infuse the flavor, but because it's a bundle, they'll be easy to remove at the very end. Like so. Speaking of the infused cream, the cream, the two cups of heavy cream, go into a pot. Those will be added to the bouquet garni that goes into the pot along with the nutmeg. That's a teaspoon, approximately, of nutmeg. The garlic also goes in, as do the scallions or the green onions. Those could go in last as a garnish, but Art has a different plan for garnish, so those will go right into the infused cream. And he stirs it all together, and then it goes on to the stove. He will cook that over a medium to low heat. He just wants that to simmer for a while. He doesn't want it to boil, but just to get warm and infuse all of the flavors together. He also will heat up his stick of butter on low heat, very low heat. It doesn't want to cook at all, he just wants it to melt. And while all of that is cooking, the potatoes are still cooking, the infused cream is infusing, and the butter is melting, Art knows that he's going to use some chives as a garnish, so he chops those up, and he'll set them aside in a bowl for later, because those will be used just in the very last step. Now Art seems to think that the potatoes are about done, so he tests them with a fork to make sure that they are sufficiently cooked, and he seems satisfied that they are. So now he's going to take those off of the heat and he'll use his colander to drain the water off. He uses a towel as a hot pad, takes them over to the sink and drains them into the colander. And now he puts them back, the drained potatoes, back into the same pan and covers them back up with the lid He's going to let those steam, just like so, without the water for a few minutes before finishing the process. Now that that's done, it's time to mash them. He removes the lid, prepares his potato ricer, and this is the most fun part for most of us. I think Art has a different most fun part in mind, and that has to do with serving, but for now, in terms of the cooking, using the potato ricer is pretty fun. So he loads up the potatoes into the ricer, and as soon as he has a full cup of those, he takes his bowl and presses the potatoes through. That is one of the best ways to mash potatoes. Now that he's happy with those, he'll take the butter, and it's important to do the butter first and the infused cream second. So he pours the butter into the potatoes and he will carefully stir that all together. While stirring, it's important not to whip the potatoes too much, but just to stir them to mix everything together without too heavily altering the texture. And now that the butter's in, he takes his infused cream. Remember, there is still that bouquet garni in there, so he wants to carefully remove that before adding the cream to the potatoes. Otherwise, he's going to have a mess to deal with. That's out of the way, so he pours now not the entire pot full, but about a quarter to a third into the potatoes. And he'll stir that together, and he'll keep adding and stirring 
gradually until he's satisfied with the flavor and the texture of the mashed potatoes. The clown seems satisfied with them as they are, so now it's time for Art to serve the potatoes. He scoops them into a bowl, and of course, we mustn't forget the garnish. He sprinkles some chives over the top as a garnish. Those also add a nice little bit of oniony sort of flavor. And just to finish it off, a light little drizzle of olive oil over the top of everything. Now that is a bowl of mashed potatoes with which you can be proud to stuff your guest's face. <laughs> <laughs>